Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today as we get ready to spend some time in the Word. I am really excited. Next week is going to be Father's Day and we're going to be opening up our church for services on that Sunday morning. We're going to have two services, one at 9 o'clock and one at 10.30. And we've sent out notification that on these services we're going to need you to reserve a spot for those services because we have limited seating capacity because of county regulations. So please take advantage of that and come. I'd love to see you again. It's been so long since we've been able to come together and worship together and be in the Word together. So next Sunday, we'll be having services at our church location on East Katati Avenue. So hope to see you there. Today, I want to take a uh, couple of moments to ask you a question. And the question is, who are you following? Uh, there are many voices that are calling for our attention. Uh, they're calling us because they want us to become followers of where uh, they are going. They want us to be followers or members of their group. They are looking for loyalty from us toward them as a group and this loyalty that they're looking for is basically to strengthen their position or their influence or power of their influence in our culture but at the end of the day something that we need to consider is what will that provide for us if we listen to their voices and follow them what will that provide for us in being a follower of any particular group. And whatever their claim or their promise that they're making in their calling to us, whatever claim or promise, it is going to be short-lived. That's just how those types of things work when people are calling us to join a group, an organization, or whatever the case may be. But today I want us to consider what benefits that we have that are God-given benefits as we choose to believe believers in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3, in verse 20, Paul tells us this, which is very important for us to know and to understand. He says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, when we are saved by the grace of God, we become citizens of heaven. So whatever organizations, whatever people group, whatever situation is calling for our loyalty here, it will be short-lived. But as we choose to follow Jesus Christ, we have blessings and benefit here, and we have the hope and the assurance of eternal life with him in heaven. We need to be aware that when we follow Jesus, our life is changed for the good here. We become God's hand extended, and we have the promise of eternal life in heaven with him. And so today, let us consider the joys and the blessings of being a follower of Jesus Christ today. I would like for you to turn with me to Psalm 95. Psalm 95, and we're going to take a look at verses 6 and 7 in Psalm 95. So while we're waiting here for the return of Jesus Christ, we need to remind ourselves that he is watching over our lives right now in our current circumstance. Psalm 95, 6 and 7. Here is what the scripture says to us. O come, let us worship and bow down. 
let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand, or the sheep that is under His care. We have a call to us today to come and let us worship and bow down before the Lord our Maker. Verse 6 tells us to we are to humble ourselves and to recognize that God is God and not ourselves. God is God and not ourselves. We are not our own God. We don't have the wisdom that we need to live this life in a way that pleases God. Our wisdom is limited. Our strength to carry through tough times is limited. It is so easy for us to become weak, discouraged, have feelings of despair. And so as much strength as we think that we have, our strength is limited. Our resources are limited. When the situation happens and our economy drops and we have invested money in stock market or whatever other avenues of wealth management or wealth increase that we think we have, our resources are limited and they can be swept away fairly quickly. And it's not our weaknesses that recognize our limitations. As a matter of fact, I believe it is a strength for us to recognize our limitations because when we recognize our limitations, we have the incentive to turn to God who is not limited. It allows us to call upon God who is unlimited in wisdom. God is all-knowing. He knows beginning to the end and everything in between. So when we come to our limited resources of wisdom, it is a great thing for us to humble ourselves and to ask God for his wisdom. And in asking God for his wisdom, something that I think is equally important is asking God for the faith and the strength and the willpower to follow the wisdom that he gives us. We are not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge God and not only who he is, but his wisdom that he gives us and the strength that we need to walk in that wisdom. So it allows us to call upon God who is unlimited in wisdom and in strength, even the strongest of us, whether it's physical strength or emotional strength or even spiritual strength that we perceive that we have. We will come to the end of our own abilities. We will come to the end of our strength. But we have the right as sons and daughters of God to call upon the strength of our Heavenly Father who has limitless strength to strengthen us, to keep putting one foot ahead of the other, to keep moving forward. God has all of the resources for us. He is the creator of all that exists. He sustains us in our existence. So his resources are unlimited and we can ask of him and he will give us the resources that we need for this day. And when we ask him for that on a daily basis, he never runs out of resources for us. Humility, humility before God gives us the capacity to receive from him all that we need for life and for godliness. Let me say that again. Humility before God our humility before God gives us the capacity to receive from God all that we need for life and for godliness. In, in our world, some might perceive humility as weakness, but it is not weakness. It is a deep spiritual strength 
that not only opens up the windows of heaven for us, but gives us the capacity to receive all that God would give us. Our worship of God, as it says here, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Our worship of God places our mind and our spirit in proper perspective. We acknowledge him as the one who is worthy of all thanksgiving and all praise. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but to acknowledge God in all of our ways. And when we do that, God is able to make our pathway straight. Our worship recognizes God as sovereign, as the Lord over our life, as the Lord over all things. The Bible tells us that he is the creator and sustainer of all that exists. So when we humble ourselves, when we bow before him, it gives us the opportunity to not only recognize who God is, but again, it puts us in the place of recognize his sovereignty and his graciousness and his mercy that supplies us with what we need. In the book of Acts, in the 17th chapter, verses 25 and 28, it tells us that he gives to all mankind life and breath and everything else. All that we have comes from God. In verse 28, it says, in him we live and we move and we have our very being. So it is wrong for us to assume that it's our wisdom and strength that has allowed us to receive and attain what God has given to us. It is by his grace and his mercy that you and I have what we have. In this process, our, our worship of him, it not only puts us in proper perspective of who we are and who God is, but it puts us in the place of understanding that he alone is worthy to receive that worship. And it also puts us in a place that we are able to follow him because he is God and greater than us and wiser than us and stronger than us and has more resources than we do. It makes sense to follow after him, living according to his word, living according to his will for us. Verse seven says, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. We are under his care. And that's a place where we come to willingly asking him to be our savior, asking him to be the Lord of our life. So we, by recognition of who he is, he becomes our God. He is the one who uh, watches over us. We become his. And this signifies to be overseen by God means to be overseen by his power, his strength, his assistance for us. When we grow tired, he's there for us. When we come to the end of our strength, we know that our God has promised never to leave us or to forsake us. The Bible tells us that in our weaknesses is his strength made perfect. You find in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul tells us this truth. Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, tells us that because of the great revelations that God had given him about God and about Jesus Christ, it tells us that God allowed a messenger of Satan who afflicted him, and in that affliction, he pleaded with God three times that this thorn in the flesh would be moved. 
And the response of God to Paul, he told Paul, no, I'm not going to remove that because in your weakness is my strength made perfect. Jesus was telling him, Paul, when you recognize your weaknesses, my strength will be made perfect in you. And Paul goes on to say, therefore, I will boast about my weaknesses. I will boast about my infirmities. I will boast about my persecutions so that when Paul was weak, then Christ's strength would be made part of who he was. And today you and I have the privilege of recognizing our weaknesses, confessing them to God, asking God for his strength so that we can overcome those things. And God will do that for us. When we are emotionally and spiritually exhausted, the Bible tells us that he will restore our souls. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and you will find rest for your souls. In the current circumstances, it is so easy to become tired and to become emotionally and spiritually exhausted. Just the other day, I, I was feeling that very same way, and, and I just, I was having a hard time getting motivated to do anything. And I remembered what Jesus said in Matthew about coming to him. And I was thinking about that and, and I was thinking about reading scripture or the scriptures that I was familiar with. And I thought of another example that Jesus gives us in the book of John when he was talking to the Jewish leaders of his day. He says, you study the scriptures daily thinking that in them you will have eternal life. And he said, but these are the scriptures that speak of me, and yet you refuse to come to me. Again, we have another reference where Jesus encourages us to come to him. And you say, well, Pastor George, how do I go to where Jesus is? It's not a matter of us going to where Jesus is. As a believer in Jesus Christ, we have the promise of scripture that he will never leave us or forsake us but that he will be with us even to the end of the age. So finding Jesus is simply finding a place of prayer and talking to him, speaking to him as you would a friend, speaking to him as you would if, with a relationship with a good father, and just open up your heart and talk to him and allow him to speak back to you. And in that relationship, we find the strength of God. When we are emotionally or spiritually exhausted, that's when we need to go and have a time of conversation, prayer with God and allow God to renew us in our strength. The Bible tells us that he will always lead us in the right way. He provides strength in our weakness. When we're emotionally, he restores our soul. He leads us in the right way for his name's sake. The best way to know that you're going the right way is to go the way that the scripture instructs us to go. Again, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Recognize him. Realize that his way is right, and he will lead us in the right path. And even when we're going through the darkest of times, when there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel, we know that he is walking with us. When we're walking through that dark valley, he is leading us to the other side. He sees what we don't see. He knows what we don't know. We need to purpose in our heart that we are going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, a follower of his word. And then he tells us that his goodness and his steadfast love is always there for us. There is a song that we sing sometimes in church. He's a good, 
good father. That's who he is. And he loves us. His love for us is eternal. And so his goodness and his steadfast love will always be there with us. Another thing the scripture tells us, he has prepared heaven as a home for us. We are just passing through this life. We have the promise and the assurance of an eternal home with God where only righteousness dwells. When Jesus himself will be the eternal son for us. Now we know that he is the son of God, S-O-N, but he becomes for us the light of the son of all of heaven, the S-U-N. And he is an awesome God who loves us tremendously. There are many voices today that are calling us to follow, whether it's a political voice, a social voice, but let's not ignore that still small voice, the still small voice of God. That is when Jesus is beckoning us, follow me. I am the good shepherd. I will lead you out to green pastures. I will lead you beside the still waters. I will always be there for you, even when times get dark. And when it seems like you're surrounded by enemies, I will sit you down at a table and prepare a meal for you that your enemies cannot disturb. I will be with you forever. And while we're on this journey, his goodness and his mercy, his steadfast love will always be there for us. And he has prepared us a home in heaven that he is leading us to. Let's be determined and in our persi persistence to follow Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd of our souls. So question I want to end with today. Are you following the ways of the world? Are you following the ways of men? Or are you following the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator and sustainer of all things, the one who loved us so much that he came to this earth of no reputation, born in a barn. His first bed was a feeding trough. He lived a sinless life. He showed us the Father in word and in deed. He let us know how much God loves us. He proved it when he laid his life down on Calvary's cross. And he took the sins of the world, your sins and mine, upon himself. He suffered the wrath and the judgment of God the Father. He understood the penalty of sin, but he was raised on the third day. He showed himself to his disciples and hundreds of others to prove he was God the Son. He was taken up into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he says to you and he says to me, follow me. And as we follow him, we find forgiveness, cleansing, reconciliation with God the Father. And we have the hope of heaven. And we're waiting for his return. And he has promised to come again to take us to be with him for all eternity. So with all the many voices calling for our attention, calling for our loyalties, calling us to follow them, let's be determined to follow Jesus Christ and him alone, for he only is worthy of our worship and our praise, knowing that he is the good shepherd and he watches over our life. Again, let me finish by reading these two verses of scripture. 
O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hand, or the sheep that He personally cares for. Friend, God loves you. If you haven't received Him as your Savior and your Lord, do that today. It's a simple acknowledgement in prayer. Jesus, I believe in who you are. I believe that your sacrifice paid my sin debt. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Savior. And when you do that, you will be saved. Your name will be written in his book of life. And at the end of all things, he will welcome you into his presence for all eternity. Let's be a follower of Jesus Christ. God bless you, friends. Have a great day. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us that you sent him to be our Savior. Thank you, Jesus, as we place our faith in you. Our sins are forgiven. We become children of God, and we have a new home in heaven. And today we determine to follow you all the days of our lives, knowing that you will receive us into your presence forever and forever. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.